Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another model video. Today we're cracking out the Spark Maker 3D printer again and creating a tank in 70 second scale. The Swiss Hertzer G13. Now we did a metal German one a while ago. The G13 variant is post war. This was downloaded off Thingiverse, link down below by NWGDN. Cracking open Spark Studio 3D on the work computer does need a 64-bit tower console with a fair amount of processing grunt. The beautiful thing about this software is you can construct your own design of supports without CAD assistance. All I did was add a bunch of uh, thick supports underneath and several for the tracks as well as a barrel. In um, side sight, this was far not enough and did warp slightly around the wheels leaving a bit of a line and the underneath was uh, very scarred and ugly. However, all the detail popped quite nicely considering the pyramid shape of the hull and uh, the cannon was fairly straightforward. Here are a few good angles, but don't take it as gospel. Future videos will probably demonstrate a far better support model. At some point, uh, the software did crash and I couldn't get it out of Chinese. The model 3D printer used is the Spark Maker Original, the one released after the initial Kickstarter with uh, no faults, so none of the um, HD modifications or configurations. The resin used inside is any cubic 405 wavelength exposure resin in the dark gray color quite lovely straight out of the printer we noticed there is a bit of warpage around the supports that snapped off and ever so slightly amount of lifting i did not have an initially long exposure time on the first layer which later on i go with the recommendation of 90 to 100 and 20 seconds and the layers is only around 10 to 12 seconds normally preferred for other resins around 20 seconds so future prints do significantly improve other than that it's very smooth and the detail is fantastic as isopropic alcohol is quite expensive where I am the whole model with the supports removed was submerged in methylated spirits with a bit of time of soaking and a scrub it does a sufficient job of removing the smell and preparing it for curing the entirety of uh, the material used is 47 grams with supports on you're looking at definitely under five dollars to create if you are importing the product Looking at the picture underneath the tank is evident of how it has it cured properly from the 3D printer. You can see some of the layers of resin tearing away, but eventually building up into a solid piece that we're enjoying right now. These sheets were cut away and sanded up after curing. The cure tank is just a standard nail a salon piece with UV LEDs or tubes inside. This was bought off eBay for around $20. The model spent a few hours in the curing tank, being flipped on multiple sides a few times as it's quite big. The chamber is very small. From this point onward, it's pretty much treated as a solid resin model kit with standard procedures of covering areas with uh, putty that's imperfect. The very rare panel had some steps for some bizarre reason, again mostly due to the supports and how I processed the whole thing in Spark Studio. The model being uh, cured doesn't require washing like a cast resin model. There is no residue or release agent. Everything was just immediately sprayed with Tamiya Primer straight out of the cure tank. There's no lifting or adhesion problems. With uh, imperfections, mostly on the side of the barrel for warpage and underneath, this was covered with uh, putty and sanded with an overall sanding and buff. Across the whole model with a range of sandpapers from a harsh 120 grit all the way to 2000 all wet. Still being a resin model, airborne uh, dust being cured by uh, chemically setting or exposure to UV is fairly carcinogenic in 
dust form. This model and its stowage is actually based off a surviving version of this tank in real life. The reference picture is at the start of the video. Fortunately it is in the German grey colour which I struggle to find too much interest in and draw the eye to being either far too dark or uninteresting. The model is painted via airbrush in lacquers. Starting from the primer base I built up both the underneath and top in German grey and lightened it up as we work up the panels with a range of greys to detailing the panels and stowage at the very top in a dust playful manner. Further shadowing around the wheel wells underneath the barrel and the very bottom was done with clear black or liquid smoke. Detail was picked up via brush again with lacquers, uh, burnt iron and uh, wood colours according to reference materials found around the stowage. The whole model was coated in a black sludge wash by Tamiya, a gloss coat. The next day a bit of weather pigment with uh, MIG pigment and sedative, a bit of a wash on the top and more heavy build up of pigment around the wheels and underneath the hull and chassis. Finished off with a bit of a drying time and a couple of coats of uh, matte, still leaving a satin-ish sheen behind as a quick build and not wanting to spend too much time. The finished model, even though it looks very close to the reference picture, is a bit uh, mediocre in my opinion. It's just uh, very quick to demonstrate the ability and how successful 3D printing small armor for wargaming, collecting, building or dioramas, especially rarer designs, is very possible and in the weight of the material far cheaper than buying injection molded plastic kits. We will compare it to an actual model kit at the end of the video. However, the selection of a file I was a bit naive and overly ambitious with a whole tank design wheels and all. The supports were completely insufficient but there is whole collections of models where the wheels, the turret and the body is uh, separated for far easier prints. Considering the imperfections and warpage of the print it actually looks excellent to display regardless. I do encourage if this is your first video in SLA or DLP printing especially on my channel I suggest checking out my review on the Spark Maker. It is the current cheapest manufactured model on the market, which you can buy off Amazon or eBay from China. It has been plagued with developmental and uh, review quality issues, though it has a fairly um, decent and active community of uh, support and active users. I found my experience to be uh, absolutely fault free with uh, minimal failed prints mostly from a learning curve of uh, being familiar with the material medium and supports of a liquid state to a solid state model through light curing. The print has taken unsupervised over 12 hours, the curing process about 2-3 to three hours unsupervised, the cleaning up pulling the supports off and painting only about three to four hours. If you really need to build a model very fast, a diorama, a wargaming uh, fleet, even if you're not worried about painting quality or build, the fact that it is about a third to a fifth of a price of an injection molded model or resin cast makes it an excellent uh, possibility with free models out there for whatever purposes you need to make a couple or a large amount of tanks especially if you have some CAD skills and do some upgrades for fantasy purposes or making a variant that are historically evident but does not exist in model form. Comparing to the metal cast garage kit I think the overall look and proportion detail is absolutely spot on. Not too sure which of the two is more accurate unless they're completely different variants. However, there is issues where the 3D models does suffer through the detail of the tracks. It's not as uh, deep and vibrant as well as the running gear underneath as an existing model kit. It depends on how far you want to go, what's important as it can't dictate things as th thin as 
milling materials or photo etch. But again, looking back at uh, cost and you get what you pay for, it is a fair assumption of if you want something better, you shell out a little more. And it depends on how deep you want the detail to go. Overall, for things you can't get injection molded, I'm actually very happy for this medium and will be producing more tanks for my own personal use and consumption, as well as had a lot of fun putting this together, downloading the model, prepping it and printing it. There was quite a learn lot to learn about and I recommend if you are exploring Thingiverse, have a look for tanks that are in multiple parts and some of the packs can be so fun as they have various different hulls and turrets to mix and match for fun or historical accuracy in certain campaigns that are just not touched in injection moulding. All in all, that is my finding with this form and medium of 3D printing. There is a more in-depth video coming along doing a character figure and exploring more tips and tricks I've learnt with the Spark Maker as well as printing in general. Look forward to it. Thank you very much for watching as always. Until next time, stay tuned for further content. All links and files are in the description section below. See you all later.